Hey Scrappers, Tom here, and unless you're living back in the Middle Ages using ice to cool things down, everyone has refrigerators and freezers. We've done a lot of information on these in the past, and we've done a little work to start to take this apart, but I do want to share with you a couple of different things. Now, first and foremost, if you are doing a lot of refrigeration scrap, it may be worth you looking into a 608 permit through the EPA that allows you to learn and properly recycle the refrigerant that inside many of these using these you these units excuse me think about an air conditioner in your house it's full of freon that's how it gets cold well same applies to a refrigerator or a freezer they need that freon to keep the items cold inside refrigerators are essentially just really big air conditioners that keeps all the cold inside so let's look at this unit right now let's look at a couple of different things we took this out of the base this was located down in this area but to save time we did clean things up a little bit. Now what I do want to show you while we're here is you have this wire that's going to the power supply. So this wire is something that you're going to want to cut right here and then attached to every unit there's generally another piece like this that's a power supply just like in a computer tower refrigerators need power supplies to convert that 110 into all the different low voltages that then power and make the refrigerators run. So right off the bat you got a piece of wire, you got a power supply, wire is going to be about two pounds. Power supply is going to be about six pounds or less depending on the size. Now the rest of the unit you have, think about an air conditioner. You have your pieces of copper pipe, number two. You have insulated copper pipe. Now sometimes these are unfortunately steel. Today this one is copper, but you want to make sure that you're cleaning these before you bring it to your scrap yard. Take this insulation off it's incredibly simple to do, and once you do it, you're able to have this number two copper tubing, and from there, you just throw it into the pile, and you're on with your day. Now, copper aside, the copper goes into a sealed unit. You always want to make sure that this compressor is drained of oil. If there was Freon, you want to make sure it's out, and here, you're going to be able to cut it real close, get that copper piping out, and you also see another wire that comes from the unit. First wire powered the unit, the second wire powered the air conditioner that made the unit cool. Now generally these have bolts on them. You can see over here we loosened some of these up, so having these bolts on there, you just take these things off. Once you take them off, you're able to lift this unit up and off and it just becomes your sealed unit. Now make sure you also look for other things. Here is an aluminum blade on top of an electric motor. So generally when you're doing work like this, you're gonna be able to come in, take this off, put this into your aluminum pile, put the motor into your small motor pile, definitely take this piece off. This way you have a clean motor and not a motor that's attached with steel. Now these are always our favorite. Very often you're going to find aluminum copper radiators. Sometimes the coils could be steel. So you wanna use your magnet for that. They could be steel. The worst thing that you could find, sometimes they're aluminum coils, but the, this that you think is copper is actually steel and it's painted black. So sometimes when you see a black coil with black piping, it's a telltale sign that it's steel on steel. That's why you always have your magnet with you. We say it all the time, scrapper's best friend, magnet and a file. It allows you to really know what you're working with. So now, once you have this unit, you've already taken this, the compressor off. You're able to go on just start to take these screws off, and it really is that simple. One thing you may want to think about doing, instead of just taking this off ahead of time, you might want to go in, and if your sawzall is handy, you can cut right down and cut right down if these are steel on the outside, but if they're not steel on the outside, then you're going to be able to just leave them on. See, these are steel. So sometimes these flanges, right, these baffles, they'll be uh, aluminum and then you can just leave them like they are, cut the copper right off when it's in place. It almost is a workspace for you. Now before we get away from this, let's look at something else. This is not steel. This is stainless steel. And I took the crowbar to show you what's inside and it's really just interesting because some scrap yards won't take refrigeration units and I just want to show you ways that you can make money, right? 
There's foam inside these walls. Why is there foam? That's what keeps all the cold inside. Now that bottom layer inside also, this is made of aluminum this specific one. These outsides are stainless. This is an item that if you sold it to a scrapyard, you might only get $5. But having your magnet with you, this might be an item you put off to the side. When you have time, you're able to strip this thing down. If there was a small amount of insulation on this stainless when it came in, most scrapyards are not gonna give you any time, any hard time. So if you can figure out a way or share ways that you clean these, we'd love to hear about it because when you have insulation that comes out this clean, by removing these panels, cutting them open and sliding the foam out, you create a piece of scrap that you got for nothing most of the time. You can make 50 to $100 on different refrigeration units. And I actually didn't believe that it was true until I started to talk to some of my customers who were bringing in these sheets with small amounts of foam. And I said, hey, where'd they come from? They said, well, we do commercial refrigerators, stainless steel, and it doesn't get glued on. The panel of foam just gets slid inside. So that's a really good piece of information for you to know. And maybe you're able to take a saw, cut down the sides, pull the panels off, and make yourself more money. Now, refrigerators are everywhere. They're getting replaced all the time. Most of them are steel, and that's why you use your magnets. But if it looks bright and shiny, like stainless steel, use that magnet. If it's magnetic stainless, I do not advise taking it apart to the level that we just talked about. But if it's not magnetic stainless, this is an item that you wanna save when you have a little time. Cut it apart and do it before and after how much money you make on it versus what you would have made bringing it and selling it as is. But things that you really wanna keep in mind, gas or oil has to be drained. No food should be left inside. And you always want to use your magnet and your other tools to see what's available because a unit like this, you could make, like I said, 50 to to $100 on, and most of the time, you're not going to even have to pay for this unit. Any other questions or comments that I missed by scrapping a refrigerator or a freezer, let me know. Until next time, I'll scrap you later. Thanks for watching our video. For $2.99 a month, by becoming a member, you can get access to early videos, member-only videos, merchandise discounts from our store, and priority comments that we answer before answering any other scrappers. Click the link below to learn more. Until next time, scrap you later.